Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis and we're talking about COVID-19 and the moment of time that we're in right now, which I think is a real tipping point. Up until now, I've been in kind of a wait and see sort of uh, mindset with the, the disease, just kind of seeing how it's developing uh, because situations like this have happened year after year. You know, last year it was Ebola, before that it was SARS, MERS, all these other uh, diseases come out and, you know, many of them just kind of fizzle out. You know, they're very, uh, you know, horrible for the area where they pop up in, but they're able to be contained. I don't think this one's going to be able to be contained. I've seen a lot of evidence that it is able to just spread very easily. And it's, it's a really difficult disease to stop because of the long incubation period that it has in people. The fact that people can be spreading it for quite a bit of time without showing symptoms. There have been a lot of uh, examples of public official ineptitude, medical institution ineptitude in dealing with this. But even barring that, this is a really challenging bug to stop. So I don't think that we're going to be stopping. I think it's going to be going global. So uh, what I'm looking for right now are signs in my area of uh, that there are people starting to contract it. And I know that I just said, you know, people can be carrying it for quite a while without showing signs and symptoms, but many people show signs and symptoms just within a couple of days. So I'm really paying attention to that and I'm doing any last minute types of things that I would want to do before that happens because when that happens, we've seen what happened uh, in China and all these other places in Iran, in Italy, in Japan, when uh, governments know that this is in their area, they clamp things down and, ju and rightly so, they're going to be saving lives by clamping things down and uh, well, they might be putting some lives at risk too, we've seen that in China. But you know, they're doing the best that they can to try to contain this and uh, you know, there's going to be discomfort that comes along with the government and public response to this. So you need to prepare yourself for that and you need to prepare yourself to deal with this kind of to some degree possibly on your own. Uh, hospitals are going to be overwhelmed as soon as this gets into anyone's area. We've seen that in China and uh, that's certainly going to be the, place, uh, the way in the Western world where you know budgets are razor thin and there's not that much uh, overcapacity uh, for things like this. So a lot of us are going to be kind of, you know, the, the public officials will be issuing, you know, information and, and trying to get information out to people. But a lot of us are going to be kind of on our own if our cells or our family member falls, uh, you know, prey to this new disease. So, you know, think about that ahead of time. You know, if you're a prepper like myself, you got the food, you probably got the masks, you probably got the clean suits and the, the, the gloves and all that kind of stuff. But think about other things. Think about things that go beyond the idea of avoiding getting sick. Think about the types of things that you want to have if someone does get sick. It's a pneumonia. Uh, I'm sorry, I have trouble saying the word pneumonia. It's a pneumonia-like uh, uh, symptom matrix that comes along with it. Uh, so think about the types of things you might want for that. I myself, just uh, last night, I ordered a bunch of different teas that are helpful if someone has a really persistent cough to try to get uh, control over that. Obviously with pneumonia, the coughing uh, can be cathartic and helpful, but if it gets out of hand, it can do its own sorts of damage. So I bought peppermint tea, I got turmeric tea and ginger tea, all to kind of soothe the throat. Uh, uh, the turmeric is anti-inflammatory. And uh, you know, these are things that I'll be happy that I have if I contract this disease or anyone in my family contracts the disease. Uh, in addition to just uh, you know picking up any uh, last items, and, uh, there's also knowledge. There's last-minute knowledge you might want to acquire. You know, we all love having access to the internet, but you know, if the power grid goes down or something, and that's completely conceivable because if you have a large number of people that are sick or their family member is sick, if you have you know a single parent and they've got a sick kid and the and the schools are all closed. Uh, you know, are they going to be going to work or are they going to be home with their kid? There's going to be a lot of staff shortages for power companies, uh, you know, utility crews, all these types of things. So many services might be, uh, you know, not as effective as you're used to them being. So if you're planning on, you know, I'll just surf the internet and find out whatever information I have, you may not have access to the internet if power goes down or if lines go down. Uh, you know, there can also be a winter storm on top of you know, everything else is going on. So you, if you, there is any knowledge that you would like to acquire about how to take care of a family member who has pneumonia, I can't say pneumonia, uh, how to take care of a family member who has pneumonia-like symptoms, uh, you know, acquire that knowledge now. Uh, when is the time to go into lockdown, so to speak? Uh, you know, there'll be an obvious time when there are, um, uh, 
you know, mandatory, uh, you know, shutdowns of areas and governments are going to do that. We've seen that in other countries. Whatever country this comes to, they're going to try to control it by locking the area down and it'll be essentially med medical martial law for a while and people will be sheltering in place in their homes uh, to try to you know, stem the, the spread of it. And you should expect for that to be several weeks at the absolute least. So make sure you have supplies for that kind of um, uh, that kind of duration. But leading up to that, before there's the official announcement that everything's locking down, you may want to lock down ahead of that. For myself personally, I bring my boy out to classes at a museum and at a, not at a hospital, at a museum and a library. You can tell what's on my mind. Uh, at a museum and a library on a weekly basis. Coming up next week, we're still planning on going to those, but when we go to the library, we're not going to be taking library books home with us. We're going to go in, uh, you know, with a mindset of, you know, not touching your face, be clean with doorknobs, uh, uh, sanitize ourselves after we leave. Is that a risk? It is absolutely a risk, but I think it's a risk that's less than the risk of dying in a car crash on the way there. Driving around in a car is the most likely the most dangerous thing that any of us are going to be doing on a daily basis, even right now, unless you have a really, really dangerous job. Uh, so, you know, everything is a calculation of calculated risk. You know, just because there's a danger doesn't mean that you shut down your entire life because if you did that, you'd never get in a car, you'd never do anything. So uh, it's important to not overly react, but to keep your mind on uh, what's important, uh, keep your uh, eyes and ears on information that's around you and to make uh, you know wise decisions based on the knowledge that you have. So like I said, I'm going to be going out with my boy. We're still going to go to classes at least for this week. We'll see what uh, next week is going to be looking like. Um, but you know, we're not completely shutting things down, but the, the sign that I'm looking for in order to get to that point where I would be like, okay, we're just not going to go out for a while is again, clusters of illness in our immediate area. And again, I'll reiterate, people can transmit this disease for quite a bit of time without showing symptoms, but quite a lot of people do show symptoms right away. So you should expect that in whatever area you're in, uh, there are going to be people that are going to show uh, signs of this disease within a couple of days and you'll get that kind of a warning. Now that said, does that mean that uh, that's going to completely insulate you from it? No, you could be in that first wave of people that are, you know, the blind ones that get it, you know, before it's completely apparent that it's there and that's a risk that you have to balance uh, to be you know really square about it it's uh, you know nothing in this world is 100% safe and you really always just have to balance uh, the way you want to live your life with uh, you know the risk level that you're willing to take and again the most dangerous thing that any of us are going to do on a daily basis is getting in that car and getting on the road so Risk is just a part of life and uh, you know you always have to manage it. But that said, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open. At some point, <laughs> the risk of getting coronavirus is going to exceed the risk of dying in a car crash and uh, you need to be aware of when that happens. So good luck. Any last minute things of supplies or knowledge, get out, get out, get that, those things now for yourself. Get yourself an action plan. Know what you're going to do. Talk to your family members about it because I think this is this is going to be something that's going to intimately affect all of us uh, at some point in the probably reasonably near future. That's it. Good luck and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.